when. When, 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 when. It is one of the most common types of questions I get. When do I treat for mites? When do I add a honey super? When do I add a brood box? When do I split the hive? When do I feed? When do I stop feeding? It is not a bad question. It is a very important question, but it is a very common question that people ask. And so this video, I'm not going to show you how to do anything. I'm just going to explain a concept so that you can answer these questions for yourself based off of what you are seeing with your bees and your environment. It's because I found that when I was learning beekeeping, one of the hardest things was finding the answer to my question that was specific to me and my hives. Uh, and everybody's way of doing things is a little bit different, specific to them and their hives and where they live. First off, there is a link in the video description to a blog post where I have a beekeeping through the seasons chart for you to download. But first, two big tips I have for you. One, beekeeping is you can't go by a set date. Even if you've been keeping bees for 20 years, you cannot do the same task on the same day, year after year. Two, keep records. Because although you can't do the same thing on the same day every year, you will start to notice a trend. Tip number three, earlier is better. If you are not sure when to do something, it is better to do it a little bit earlier than you should have than too late. Tip number four, and this is a big one because this strikes a chord with me and the way I am. I try to do it perfectly. I don't want to make any mistakes. And researching to the point you are ready to explode or give up or just frustrated and not doing it or doing it too late is bad. It is better to do it not perfectly, but on time or early. Okay, number one, feeding. You feed bees for two reasons, and it's important to understand the reason why you do these things because it will help you understand when to start and when to stop. The two reasons why you usually feed your bees is to prevent them from starving and to encourage growth. You want to start feeding your bees when you want them to grow. For most beekeepers, this is the early spring, mid spring when you want them to build honeycomb and you want the population to increase and you want the queen to lay. So if your hive is new, no matter the time of year and it's small, you're going to want to feed them. If you just split a hive and the hive is small, you'll want to feed them some syrup. In the winter time, you're going to want to put extra feed on top as well as their frames of honey so that they have ample food for the winter time when it's too cold for them to leave the hive. When do you take the feed off? Well, if it is warm out and the bees are gathering food from flowers, then you take the feed off when they're not taking the feed anymore. Or once you already have at least 10 frames drawn out or 10 bars drawn out of honeycomb, usually it's a one deep box for most beekeepers, then you can take the feed out because they have ample resources in the hive and they can start bringing in feed of food for themselves. But there is wiggle room, of course, and so you can keep the feed in a little bit longer, but you definitely want to take it out when you start to see the bees drawing out comb and filling it up with honey and capping those cells. Or if you have a Langstroth style beehive, that would be the first two boxes are full and you are now adding a third box, which we call a honey super because it's going to be all honey and the queen isn't going to be laying in there. And this is where developing the beekeeper intuition comes in handy. It's important to spend time with your bees. Some beekeepers choose to not open the hive or bother the bees too much when they first get them, but I really disagree with that. I think it's really important to keep your inspection time short and you don't want to be spending 45 or more minutes checking on your bees. But open the hive, look at the frames, look on either side, close it back up, set a timer for 15, 20 minutes, and that's when you should be closing the hive up, back up. And do this once a week with your bees. Also spend time outside the hive watching them come and go. See how the activity increases. See how many bees are coming back with pollen on the sides of their legs. See how many bees are coming back and passing off nectar to another bee at the entrance. Listen to the buzzing and get to know your bees and their activity and you will see how it changes. You might not notice that you're developing that intuition, but this is something that you cannot train for. Uh, you, you can't learn in a book, you can't read about. You just have to 
get used to it and then you will see when something is changing and you will know how to adjust. So when you start to see lots of bees with pollen on their legs, lots of bees coming back and passing off nectar, when you are seeing lots of activity at the entrance, that is a good sign that the bees do not need your feed and you can stop when to add space to your beehive. For some beehives, that's adding boxes like the Langstroth style beehive. And for other hives like the top bar, it's moving that follower board. And either way, you are still giving more space to the bees to build. Now, when you only have two or three empty frames, that's when most beekeepers choose to use, add another deep box on top. And my experience, the queen will also go up to the second deep box and she will lay eggs on roughly half of the frames and the other half of the frames will be honey. Now when this deep box is mostly full and you only have two or three empty frames, that's usually when people start adding honey supers. Uh, you can keep adding more and more boxes on top until you are ready to harvest. You can add this box on top sooner if you like, especially if you think you're gonna be going on vacation or you won't be able to check your hives for more than a week. So that's when you add boxes onto your beehive. But there's gonna be a time of year when you're going to take them off. And that is going to be when it is honey harvesting time. So you're going to see that your bees stop bringing in so much honey and stop building comb. And you're going to see that because when you do an inspection, you're going to fill out an inspection sheet. I have a link in the video description to a free download of mine. So when you start to see that the bees aren't, aren't growing uh, at the pace that they were, and it's been a few weeks, and this is usually going to be late summer. And it is also good to get to know the bloom is, it's really helpful to just join associations or even just follow their Facebook page. Now there is going to be a late season bloom uh, for a lot of the US, it's goldenrod, and that is a fall blooming plant and is a huge source of food for the bees. You want to harvest your honey before the goldenrod blooms. It is a common thing you'll see on the sides of the highway. It it's, grows very fast, it's kind of, considered a weed for some people, has these yellow flowers and the honey, in my opinion, is not very tasty. But it is a great feed for the bees in the late fall as an extra little bit of food for winter. So harvest your honey before the golden run. It's okay if you harvest too soon or a little bit too late. There's wiggle room here and you're not gonna be perfect your first couple of years. Best thing to do is to just have a general idea of when, when the flowers are dying off. Walk around your area and harvest your honey when you are pretty sure there's not gonna be much honey left coming in. Which brings me on to my next time, which is treating for mites. Not everybody treats for mites, and if you choose not to, then ignore this section and jump to the next chapter. But treating for mites is a great way to ensure that your bees make it through winter. The thing is, is that it is very important to treat at specific times. You cannot just treat before you close your hive up. So it is common for beekeepers to treat in the springtime. I always recommend doing a mite test to a different hive, uh, just one of your hives in your apiary every single month to know what your mite levels are. And to put in a treatment if necessary in the springtime. That is to ensure that you do not have a mite infestation in the summer when there's honey on your beehive. Because trying to put a treatment in with honey is confusing and complicated and something I don't recommend. If you are new to beekeeping, just bought your hive, and you don't know what your mite levels are, it's too small to do a mite test, you can either contact the place you bought your packages or nukes from to see if they treated in the spring. And if they did, then just don't. You can do a mite test with powdered sugar so that it doesn't kill the bees. You can open up some drone cells and see how many mites you see on 20 drone pupa. Or you can just put a treatment in and that would just be the one time in your beekeeping career that you just treated because it was better to be safe than sorry. The next time you treat is after you harvest your honey. If you're not harvesting any honey, then when you see that the bees um, are decreasing in activity and there's not so much blooming. 
and the hive isn't growing anymore. In this case, it's better to treat too early than too late. The purpose to treating your hive at this time is because this is when the queen is laying eggs for the winter bees. The winter bees are a little bit different than the bees that are in the hive currently during the warmer months. Their fat deposits are different and they will take the hive through the winter. So it is really important that these bees are healthy and they do not have a row of mites feeding off of them. Because over 90% of the mites in a hive are in the cells with these pupating bees laying eggs and feeding off of these poor pupa. These pupa hatch, they're gonna have deformed wings and viruses and be weak or not hatch at all. You want these bees to be healthy. You do not want a lot of row of mites. Now, a lot of treatments stay in the hive for six weeks so that they get to all of the bees because the treatments don't penetrate through the beeswax so they can't get to the mites on the cells um, inside the cells on those pupating bees where most of the mites are so the treatment's in for six weeks so that when a bee hatches and the mites are on it then it will then the mites will die from the treatment so you have this six week period that the treatment has to be in and to really kill those rural mites so you put in the treatment at the end of summer after honey has been harvested and by the time the queen starts laying eggs and these eggs turn into pupa, you want that hive to be at least 90% clear of varroa mites. So you have some wiggle room and earlier is better. The thing is, is that late summer, early fall is when a lot of robbing happens. And a lot of bees from neighboring hives are gonna to come to your hive and try to get in and steal honey. Now these bees come from neighboring hives where people don't treat, where they might have infestations, where they might be wild bees. You do not know. Now, this is where having a great location comes in handy. Cause if your bees are in an area where there's lots of food or where they are far away from other hives, there won't be so much robbing. But if they are close to other hives, and there is a lot of robbing, robbing is going to bring lots of mites right back into your hive. So that's why you treat for a third time right before you close your hive up for winter. A great treatment is oxalic acid because there's probably no brood present anymore and your queen's not laying eggs anymore. And so oxalic acid can be just one treatment that goes in and you do, does not have to stay in the hive for six weeks like a lot of the other treatments. Some beekeepers also find that they need to treat again in the winter time. Now that is not as common. I don't know many people that do have to do it, but I have heard of people needing to do it. So this is something that I would only recommend doing if you talk to other beekeepers who say in the area it's necessary or you found that your hives just had very high varroa mite levels consistently throughout the beekeeping year and those mite levels increased very quickly even after a treatment was put, was put in. When to split your beehive? You can split your beehive as early as your bees let you. You need at least eight solid frames of brood in your hive so that you can take four frames of brood from it and put it in the split and your hive, the parent hive, will be left with four frames of brood. The more frames of brood your hives have when you split them, the better and the faster they will recover and grow into a full size hive. It doesn't matter what month it is, it can be as early as possible that you are inspecting your hive it's warm out and they have ample brood to take from them now when you don't want to split your hive is when it would be too late for your bees to recover and grow so if you're concerned that it's too late in the season to split your hives then don't uh, and wait till the next year when you've seen a full season or two and you know how much time you have and how fast your bees grow come late summer uh, also, if you just contact local apiaries that sell queens and see if they have queens for sale. If no one's selling queens because it's too late in the year, if you're not seeing drones in your hive anymore, it is too late to split a beehive. When to prevent swarming. You want to prevent swarming throughout the entire year. If there is nowhere for bees to build comb and for the queen to lay, your bees can potentially swarm. So when you have one box on your hive, you want to add another box once you only have two or three empty frames. Once that second box is full, you can add a honey super on top. However, you still always throughout 
that warm season when the bees are active, you want to make sure there is room in the brood. So if you're using this style of beehive with boxes, you want to make sure there is one to three empty frames in both of your brood boxes. This will allow the bees somewhere to go, somewhere to build, somewhere for the queen to lay, and will prevent the bees from wanting to swarm off. It does not matter how many boxes are on top, it is all about space within the brood nest. The brood nest is where the queen is laying her eggs, the eggs then turn into larvae, the larvae then have a capping and they pupate. That is the brood nest and you need space within the brood. And that is what I have to say about timing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so that you're notified about the next time I put a video up. I go live on the first Friday of the month and I gotta get out of the rain. Just bought your hive.